Welcome everybody. We got an exciting time today. I think it's going to be exciting for you guys. Amen. So when y'all, <laughs> Vince is with us again, and we just came from um, an interesting meeting this last weekend where we were helping uh, set some things into motion as far as prayer is concerned, yeah. and praying uh, for a particular ministry to um, be able to lay a foundation of prayer so we can right. actually move into this movement <laughs> that God is doing. Mm. And God does things in stages. Right. Well, once in a while, Acts 2, he just like starts blowing on you, <laughs> and, then, and then things happen. But, you know, what's so interesting about that, Vince, is that they already knew about 9 o'clock. They already knew it was the day of Pentecost. I mean, right. they were Jews, so they knew that. They just didn't know the wind was going to blow. Right. <laughs> they didn't know the fire was going to come. But God already has things set up. So we need to learn that when you flow with the Holy Spirit, he's not goofy. You know, the blah, 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 you know, like this. If you study the scriptures enough, you can understand he, he does one, two, three. He right. does this, he does that. But now, he might have said it 2,000 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> We're waiting on it right now. But he will quicken your spirit. Like you're reading the same scripture you read 100 times, and all of a sudden, yay, it comes alive. Yeah. And so then you know, oh, this must be a now, now time. So what we're going to talk about today is how you can get a key, your key. You know, uh, Matthew 16 and 18, the Lord said, I will give you keys to the kingdom. So Amen. you got keys. We've been doing keys around here as prophetic right. acts. So for, I don't know, a year or two and um, giving each other keys and reminding we got keys. But we're going to give you keys today, how you can enter into this place to where the end goal for you and for us and for the body of Christ and for the United States and for the world <laughs> is we're going to move into the very presence of God. Amen. And as we move into the glory of God, because a lot of people have different understandings of the glory of God. He's not just a cloud up there. Uh, he cloud represents his very presence. Wow. And that's what he explained in Exodus 33. And we won't go through all those scriptures today, but Exodus 33 Moses said, hey, I'm not going anywhere until I figure out who I'm following. Right. I mean, think about that power of <laughs> that good night. He's opened the Red Sea and did all this stuff. And I was like, hmm. So Moses wanted to know something in particular that he didn't know. Right. And that's what you want to know. You want to know something in particular that you haven't really grasped yet. And so he said, Moses said, okay, I need to know who you are. I need to know your name. Because in the Old Testament, and still today, much is given in the name. The name right. means a lot. So, But it was really, God, it was God's shot. So God said, hey, I'm not going to talk to you about that. I'm going to talk to you about who I really am so that you understand my name. Amen. So he said, instead of saying, I am the Lord God Almighty, he said, I'm tender. I'm kind. I'm going to show you my loving mercy. And I'm going to stick you over here so that you can really grasp this. And that's like getting in that secret prayer closet and reading your scriptures and praying. He said, I want to open your eyes so you can see that I am good. Wow. And as his goodness passed by, then Moses went, whoa, the Lord, the Lord, <laughs> the Lord is good, his mercy. So what I'm saying about the glory of God is of his very presence. Wow. Now you have the presence of God if you're born again. Whether you're filled with the Spirit or not, you have, I mean, you can't be born again without the help of the Holy Spirit. Right. So the Holy Spirit brings His presence. you got His presence on the inside of you, Vince. I do too. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is, where's that key to all of this? And I'm not trying to give you 10 steps to this and 5 steps to that. And I can do that, I guarantee you. I know how to do that. In fact, when Vince and I, like we work on a project or something... He loves a things to do list, and I do too. I just like, and I love to go back and check them off. Right. But I'm not doing that today. What I'm trying to do is open your eyes for the fact that you're looking for the presence of God when you say the glory of God, and then, but you're looking at the presence of God within you, what He's deposited inside you, and how do you tap into that? How, what is the key to that? And that's what we're going to talk about today. You want to comment on that? <laughs> Absolutely. Wow, that's so good. Um, you know, as you were uh, sharing, I was 
you know, uh, asking Holy Spirit, you know, what, what are you stirring up? You know, what are you saying? And um, so, um, like what, uh, what Pastor Ginger was saying is that God does everything in a, in a process. Yeah. Um, and I was just seeing uh, such a, a beautiful correlation uh, with Moses' experience on the mountain is that God knew that if Moses was to know him mm -hmm. and to know his goodness, as their relationship or as God began to unveil Moses' eyes to see his glory more, mm -hmm. his goodness would keep him on track. That's right. Wow. And so, um, Say that again. So um, <laughs> as we... You know, let's let's take it down to us. I mean, you know, we we are in some cases where we have the same opportunity as Moses, but let's just put it on a practical yeah. place. Yeah. Is as we are looking at the goodness of God, and as we know the goodness of God, the, the Bible says the goodness of God leads man under repentance. Yes. So a lot of times, I know from my experience is that I felt uh, almost scared <laughs> of having a deep relationship with God because I felt like my frailties would cause me to. I don't know, maybe get struck by lightning. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> you know, who knows? Uh, who knows what the imagination would do or the lie of the enemy that would keep us at a distance. Yes. But it was the when I embraced that God was so good that he would love me infinitely because he only saw his son and he didn't see my frailties. Yeah. I was like, oh, you really do mm -hmm. accept me, but you ex don't accept my frailties. You accept the the perfect sacrifice of Jesus. Yes. Yes. So take all that into the synopsis what I gave is that when we when we trust God because we know he's good and we know that he provides for what he expects. Mm -hmm. And that is so amazing. God provides for everything he expects from you. Mm -hmm. If he sends you into a foreign mission field, he will provide the grace Mm -hmm. to be able to make it all the way to the end. You won't fail. Him. As <laughs> long as you true. show up <laughs> and you say, I'm available, his grace is more than sufficient oh, to man. supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory for those, uh -huh. for those. Uh -huh. And so, uh, but anyway, so just the keys of supernatural, you know, take it into that mindset, you know, on a practical basis is trusting God and looking into his glory and when we ask him to take us deeper into his into his glory he's going to make sure that we are we start off on a basic level trusting him yeah. and seeing his goodness mm -hmm. so that we can receive an upgrade so when when he does something um we receive it we re, we are able to see his glory in a new way i'll mm -hmm. put it in an example like when something happens in our lives that we were maybe not comfortable with, right? <laughs> like a supernatural he means experience. like a big bump in the road. Is or, that what you're... <laughs> or like a, a, an angelic experience. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. or like a, a heavenly experience. Yeah. You know, you've had a few of those. <laughs> and so, but it was the goodness of God yeah. that allowed your feet to be on solid, uh, biblical-based ground. Mm -hmm. I'm not the earthly ground, but the... God ground scriptures. on the scriptures yeah. that allowed him to, to catapult you into that higher place. Yes. But that foundation had to go first, mm -hmm. you know, and I love the, uh, where, um, you know, Chuck Pierce teaches that, uh, Judah always has to go first. Yeah. You know, I, that mindset for me is just like it unlocks so much mm -hmm. is that worship, the, the adoration or the love of God or the honor of God goes before the warfare before the experience before the manifestation that way it lays a strong foundation because god's ultimate desire is that we're not moved and that he's able to show us his goodness yes exactly and you know our foundation scripture where we started when we started these yeah. series is a uh, philippians 3 10 the amplified for my determined purposes that i might know him that I might may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding mm. the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. Yeah. And so if our determined purpose is not to have the manifestation of the glory of God so we can run around and tell everybody like, well, guess what? An angel showed up at the house yesterday. Yeah. But our determined purpose is, hey, I want to see another facet. I want to 
I want to see something about you that I don't understand, Father. I want to see how you see me. I want to give me revelation, understanding, insight to what this mess that's going on in my life or what this next step is that I need to be doing or I need right. to be taking. And so this this is the very key. I'm telling you, this mm. is the key because it ties the rest of the scripture ties into the resurrection power. Wow. So the what's happening to us, just to lay it out, we're slowly but graciously and powerfully moving into this move of God, this prophetic move of God, where God is bringing the prophets to the top, I guess you would say. I don't know if that's the right terminology, but bringing them to where we're recognizing them. And as we begin to see that, they're like a steering wheel, I guess, or they're able to get words. They're they're. Their position, their office, is they hear directly from God. Not that pastors don't hear and teachers. I hear from God, too, and I'm a teacher. So it's I'm not saying that, but I'm saying there's something special about that office right. as far as authority and power. So they get their words directly from him. Then they decree and prophesy those words. As they do, then that gives us some direction. It's like that GPS in the car it tells you, you know, go down here and turn left and right like that. And if you mess up, then it says rerouting, <laughs> rerouting. I do that time. lots. <laughs> but God will get you back again because that's what the prophets do. Right. Because Jeremiah's, and you know, I really like Jeremiah in the Bible. He said, y'all knock it off. You know, you're serving the wrong gods and you're going to end up down in Babylon. So they didn't listen to him. So he said, well, it's all right. We're going to reroute. After 70 years, you guys are going to get to come back. But wow. then it took another prophet, Daniel, to understand what Jeremiah said. And once Daniel understood that, and this is amazing. I love this. I've taught this, I guess, since, I don't know, maybe since the 80s. But Daniel had these companions. Mm -hmm. And when I first started praying for the nation in 91, and when I first started this ministry, I had Kim and Annie. It was just the three of us. And we had that scripture. Yeah. And God, we would pray and we would say, okay, we're, the, we're here together. And I wasn't saying I was Daniel, but we were saying we have this companionship to where we can understand naughty sayings like, gosh, I mean, <laughs> we were just learning how to do this. And we're like, it's not making sense. You know, we're seeing this and seeing that. And it sounds like goofy land, but we needed each other. And so that's where you come in. Daniel had to have companions or he had to have friends. Like I said, I've been teaching on this for years. In fact, I think I started back in the 80s teaching on it. How getting together in prayer, your companions, different ones you can you can join with your pastor in church or you can have prayer groups that you have and you have a prayer leader. And as we do, each one of us is supplying what is needed. Right. Everybody has a part Everybody has a piece. That's what Corinthians says. Somebody bring a psalm. Somebody bring a song. Somebody bring a word. And so we come together that way, and it makes a whole. Right. And so that's what I'm trying to help people see, and that's why I'm writing that book, how important you are. It seems like those companions weren't very noted in the Bible, except they did go through the fiery furnace, and they came out without any, they didn't even smell like smoke. Wow. You know? And so that's pretty powerful, right? right? I mean, God honored their, oh, you think about what I'm saying. He honored their companionship with Daniel to get the secret thing unlocked that they could go back to their own land after 70 years. So here we are now, and here you are. You might not have a public ministry. You may not be behind a pulpit, but how important you are. So I just gave you a key, understanding how to get to the place to where the glory of God begins to manifest, not only in your life, but in your church, in your prayer group, in the United States, in the body of Christ. Right. Because you're praying, you're seeking God, you and your companions, you and your church, you and your pastor. As you do, we're getting into that move of God, that move that he's doing right now. It's, it's not full swing yet, but mm -hmm. it's going to be. Because the Antichrist is already standing up. I mean, like, he never went away. Paul talked about him 2,000 years ago. He's still here. Yeah. But he's he's not going to man-fest. <laughs> like, you got what I said? So 
anyway because we're holding back time. That's right. And so as we pray for the prophets, we pray for this move that God is doing, then that that's a key right there for you because then when you pray in that secret prayer closet, Matthew 6 says God will reward you openly. So you help him with his and he's going to help you with yours. And so as we do that, then we're going to see over time, I don't know how long this is going to be, but over time, we will see then the coming move of the apostolic. Mm. So when the apostolic and the prophetic get together, oh, wow. Wow, just think about it. As that begins to happen, then you will, you're you going to see the presence of God everywhere. It's yeah. going to be because the Bible says that. He said the glory of God will be seen everywhere. Wow. And so we're going to hold on to that because that's what's, in fact, I firmly believe this. I've been waiting on this all these years since 71 when I first heard about it, Wigglesworth's uh, yeah. prophecy. It's worldwide. We've never had worldwide. We've had popcorn. <laughs> you know, <laughs> something happened right. over here in Toronto. Yay, yay. You know, go go to Toronto. Something happened in Florida. Yay, yay. Go to Florida. And, but this is going to be everywhere. That means it's going to be in your house. It's going to be in your church. It's going to be in your surrounding. It's going to be in your city. It's going to be in your state. The presence of God is going to manifest to the place to where Willsworth Revival talks about whole hospitals being empty worldwide. Wow. That's and amazing. so, but we got to have that mouth of those prophets. See, we got to have them like, burp, you know, <laughs> all right. You know, you Antichrist spirit, it's not time to get out of our way because we're coming through. And the presence of God is so wonderful and so powerful. Then things just happen. It happens the, the times that I've actually gone and had things have happened where the presence of God was in manifestation coming up out of you. Kenneth Hagin Sr. teaches it this way. The spirit up and on, mm -hmm. coming up and on, up and on. Not falling down from the sky, right, but right. coming up. We need you. <laughs> we need you to find your key to unlock. And God's trying to unlock what's on the inside of you so that you can be a part of this. So if you unlock whatever you need to do with the presence of God inside you, and you unlock, I unlock, and everybody unlock, wow, then that's worldwide. Wow. Do you realize how that happens? That's amazing. So we're moving into that. And so... This is where we're headed, but we have to keep our eyes not on the manifestation of the glory of God and the miracles, which they're going to happen. They're going to be commonplace. They're going to happen. It's just going to be, that's just how it's going to happen. Right. And, but that's not, that's not the key. The key is, is your face in his face? Is his face in your face? Is he kissing your cheeks because he loves you? Are, are you that close? Are you that intimate with him to where he's right there and, you cry all night and he's right there wiping your tears away. Uh, when you're just like, oh my God, you asked me to do this thing. Oh Jesus, how in the world am I going to do it? And he goes, it's okay, I got this. <laughs> you know, it's going to be all right. You're going to be able to do it. And so where he's just there, where he's everything. You know, he's just everything. And you go, okay, I'm married. I got three kids and how in the world am I going to do this? And I'm working two jobs. Hey, you can tap into the presence of God anytime. Oh, that's right. I mean, you can like be in some grocery store start praying in tongues stop singing in tongues they'll think you're in some foreign country just praying in their language or something they'll never know you're just seeking god while you're trying to find a loaf of bread yeah. i mean and then watch what happens jerry savelle said this way that years ago he said even in the grocery stores you're just going to be going there doing your thing and people are going to start falling out under and you're going to turn around and go whoa what just happened you're not even going to do it that's how easy it is in the presence of god it's not something we have to work at and we have to hold our mouth just right. It's something when we love him and we honor him and we adore him and we worship him and we're so grateful for our salvation. He just begins to come up out of us. I mean, it's just like, um, and I'm not going to cry. I hope I'm not going to cry. I got to hold my great grandson, my first great grandson, and I was a bucket of tears because <laughs> the love that was in me came out of me. As I was holding him in my arms. Wow. See, you, you, it, it happens when you love Jesus and you adore him that it just starts manifesting and it starts rolling out here. Now, that's the real glory of God. Wow. That's the real glory. That's the real glory. So, you want to share some more? Yeah, sure. So, um, wow. Um, 
you know. Did you get anything? <laughs> when it, it, she kind of, she, uh, Pastor really got into a prophetic flow there. Um, and, you know, it, it's really amazing that you are able to release that um, here in this place. Um, you know, it, we, we kind of want, didn't, we don't intend to, uh, to release uh, prophetic words like that or prophetic direction on this specific setting. But I would say, it, what a better setting to be able to talk about the supernatural manifestation yeah. in our life. Yeah. Um, that, that is like a current event uh, mm -hmm. thing that was just said. So I know it was said very fast, mm -hmm. but um, you know, let's, let's take a deep breath, maybe go back and watch this again, <laughs> um, and then tr take some notes, and then set an expectation. Um, I firmly believe and, and am confirmed in the word as I read the, the encounters that other brothers and sisters in the faith have yes. gone before us. They all had an expectation. Yes. And that's where the manifestation came. So mm -hmm. um, look at this. Uh, one of the images in the Bible that uh, the Lord kept reminding me as you were speaking, I was saying, Holy Spirit, help us. Mm -hmm. Help us to bring a, a practical Mm -hmm. a practical point to where mm -hmm. we can all move together in this mm -hmm. situation mm -hmm. and where we are going. Mm -hmm. So uh, pastors uh, just prophesied, I mean, released a prophetic, uh, a prophetic angle or a prophetic, um, I don't know how you say, direction, prophetic direction on where we're going. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are in the, the time of the prophets. Yes. Um, and the reason is, yes. is not because uh, the prophets haven't been here. Or because they're not going That's to be right. in the That's future. Right. It's That's because right. the prophets have been prescribed to save to save us. As Moses delivered the children yes. of Israel, mm -hmm. he turned a nation back to God. Mm -hmm. um, many nations, or even our nation, we'll just talk about our nation because you know we're part of that nation, yeah. so we have authority. Our nation has turned its back on God in in many senses, yes. in many places. And so we've allowed it to be turned, and so we need a prophetic movement, yes, like Moses, to to deliver us from that uh, yes. bad place of oppression. Mm -hmm. Now, the only way that we're able to be delivered is when we keep our eyes upon the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So Moses was a manifestation of God's desire for man, which would be like the Word of God, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll give another uh, example would be Peter. He was called to step out upon the water. And the only time he was able to be victorious on the water is whenever he kept his eyes on Jesus. Yes. Now, what he was keeping his eyes on was his relationship, going back to the goodness, his relationship with Jesus yeah. and his revelation that Jesus was the Son of God. Remember whenever Jesus said, hey, are y'all going to leave me too? And they're like, well, we're going to go. You're, you're the one that has the words of life, right? So it was Peter's focus on Jesus mm -hmm. or his focus on what he knew, his goodness, you know, mm -hmm. all the things. He just trusted Jesus. I mean, come on. Yeah. He just trusted. I mm -hmm. mean, Pastor Ginger is not Jesus to me, but she is a uh, an authority and she's a friend and she's a she is someone I trust. So when she asked me to do things that make me feel uncomfortable, <laughs> I just trust her. I mean, I, I trust her when she says, hey, we're going to lay some towel in the floor on the floor it's going to be okay let's just do it i'm like okay well i trust you and and i believe that the lord empowers us at that point whenever we just keep an eye on what we do know which is her faithfulness i keep an eye on her faithfulness and so i know that if 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 you know if we get started because of her disposition and what i know of her that she will not be like okay now you figure it out you know, she'll be all the way till the end. We'll figure it out together. Mm -hmm. And so been also Jesus. Peter knew that Jesus would not allow him to fail. That's right. Because That's he had right. proved it. That's and right. so when, Pe when uh, <laughs> Peter was like, hey, man, call me out. I want to be there, too. Mm -hmm. But whenever he began to look around at all mm -hmm. the, the things going on and he got his eyes off what had actually delivered him from the boat, from yeah. is that he was able to conquer it. But whenever he wavered. Then he began to go below the waves. Yeah. And the same thing happened with the children of Israel when they got their eyes off what God was doing in them. And they began to say, oh, but, 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 but. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and all those things caused them to sink below the waves and to live below what God intended them to walk on, mm -hmm. right? 
And so in this move, and then Morgan, now we're going to take it back right back to the prophets. Yeah. <laughs> when the prophet gives a word, yes. when the prophets are prophesying, this is what God's doing. The Bible says you take the prophet's word and you get the prophet's reward. Well, what is the reward? Yes. The reward is the deliverance. Mm -hmm. The reward is the righted direction. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that for me and my, my house, we want to be in God's perfect will. And so we need to take the word that God has already given us for whichever way it comes mm -hmm. and we need to put it before us and we need to stay on it. Mm -hmm. Even if our, uh, you know, situations, the waves <laughs> are crashing around us, we stay in that path to where the word of God is before us. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus is the word of God. So prophetically speaking, when Jesus was before Peter, he was the word. So whatever God's word, that whatever word of God that you've gotten stays before it when the prophet gives a word mm -hmm. like pastor said they are given the word that they heard directly from god and if if the body of christ now take how we can do it on individually is we do it you yes. can't expect your brother to do it yes, right. if yes, you're not right. doing it i'm mm -hmm. sorry it's and that is the key here <laughs> do it yourself yes and then don't judge somebody else for not doing it pray That's for them right pray for them <laughs> you know i <laughs> anyway, that's a whole nother teaching. But it, it, in that situation is is find out what the prophets are saying. Then you do that. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing that, then what happens is as your life is in that direction is you will draw those that are... You have people following. I'm sorry. Yeah. There are always people whose eyes are on the sons and daughters of the Most High. Even the earth yes. is waiting and groaning for the mature sons and daughters to come. Yes. That means they're watching. Because they wouldn't know until you're here. And so that means they have to be paying attention until you are here. Yeah. So we're moving in that direction. So get a part of it. Be a part of what God's doing. Be a part of that and the fulfillment that all of us are longing for. Yes. The manifestation of the supernatural. All those things, they're going to be natural. Yes. Like they are a part <laughs> of us naturally. The problem is, is that we've been disjointed from the body for too long and it's hindered us yeah. dis-ease has come into the body has come into the body of christ and has hindered us from living up to what god has called us to so we're being put back we're being yeah. replaced repositioned so that god can do what he wants to do and what he wants to do is allow his presence to come back mm -hmm. so that he can manifest his glory here on the earth yeah. and so that his name will be honored again so that the enemy will not have a foothold now, one aspect of the glory is, is the honor and reverence of God back again. And it's not so that God's not some egotistical person up in the sky saying, you better honor me or I will burn you. <laughs> it's not like that. It, it's actually the reverse. It's like God knows that if you honor him, then the enemy has no place in you right. or around you. And he can't come in and afflict you. And even if he does put you in a fiery furnace... He will, God will be there to protect you. You will get the blessing of the experience and the manifestation of his glory. The others around you will get the testimony of saying, whoa, God. And then your legacy, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's legacy has been forever, for, has been forever told as a pinnacle of walking in the glory, walking in his goodness, walking in his protection just because they said i'm going to follow him and i will not veer from the right or from the left no matter what you do to me i belong to him right amen and i got one scripture before we go to help you it's a uh, first uh, corinthians chapter 15 and verse 40 you can read all through there where does the glory of god come from where does the presence of god come from it talks about the celestial and terrestrial We've got the inside and we've got the outside. Mm -hmm. And so what is inward will always be revealed outward. Oh, wow. That's good. You can absolutely mark it down. And I know you think, oh, my gosh, what's in me? Yikes. But we're concentrating on the glory of God right. right now. Right. And so, but that's where the glory comes from. Because what's inward will always manifest outward. So as you just begin to pray over this and just say, Lord, help me not to go to goofy land, but help me understand how can I do this? Show me my individual key. And the other thing, I, and what, I love everything about God. I like him. He likes me too. And so, but 
one of the things is he always works with us like we are. Mm -hmm. He he in our character. Y'all don't have to be like me, and I don't have to be like y'all. And it's okay for you to be. And so he's looking and he's helping you, and he say, "This is your your key. This is how you can do it." Like some people like a whole lot of music. I like it quiet. I like to get it quiet still. I probably hear more and see more and have more experiences in the nighttime than I do in the daytime because it's quiet. Nobody's there. It's peaceful. And I can just get into those places with God mm -hmm. so easy. With There's a bunch of chatter around it. it. It doesn't work for me. But, you know, music might be perfect for you. Right. Music might be just the way that, you know, like Prophet Robin, he loves music and it helps him. And Pastor Kuhneman, the same way. It, it keys something on the inside of them. And all I'm saying is God works with you like you are. Mm. So what you got on the inside, he's wanting to manifest on the outside. And what you have on the inside is the very presence of God Almighty. And as you tap into that, and that begins to manifest on the outside, just like Peter's shadow then things begin to happen in the supernatural. Wow. But like Vince just said, I love this. We need to be supernatural naturally. Yeah. We, we've been going from I'm natural and I'm trying to get in the supernatural. Turn that around. We just need to be supernatural. I'm That's in right. the kingdom of righteous peace and joy. That's where I am. That's the supernatural. Now, how does that work out here in the natural? That's right. Let's get the horse back in front of the cart. Okay. That's right. Well, our time is up. Wow, and y'all, it so fast. I, it does. It goes so fast. So um, I just want to encourage you. I need you guys to get a hold of uh, my book, um, His Blood Speaks. You can order it from gingerziegler.com. Order it right away because uh, it takes us a little while to get them out to you so you can have them for Christmas presents. But the main thing is, I'm telling you, <laughs> we're headed for some bumps. You're going to need to know how to apply the blood of Jesus, which is the very life of Almighty God. That's right. The life is in the blood. And so you need this. And also sign up on our email list, staff at embracinghisgrace.org. And let me hear from you. And please share this. I'm still trying to get to a 1,000 on YouTube. I need your help. <laughs> but anyway, so you guys help me. Thank you for those that so graciously I met y'all at the church this past weekend some of you guys that hang in here and pray for me i was really excited to see you face to face it was really cool so anyway god bless you and we will see you next tuesday at 10 o'clock texas time until then thank you don't y'all just love vince being here oh, we've been together for years and he is so prophetic and i love it and he has a way when he prays for me i just want to say this i know he's supposed to be off but <laughs> vince Vince has a way when he starts praying, like on our Monday nights, we pray, we have a little group that prays for me on Monday nights. His prayers, his words help me. The way he prays helps me. Annie does too. I love to hear Annie pray. And so we have, God hooks us up, companions, remember I was talking about companions. God hooks us up with people with like precious faith, mm -hmm. like minded, the same spirit of faith, the same, in the same arena. And so I'm so thankful for Vince, and I just want y'all to be thankful for him because he helps me so much. This is not an easy subject, what I'm doing, and I'm going slow trying to not sound like I'm out there. I can be out there, though. <laughs> <laughs> but so that we can be practical and you can use it in everyday life. So send some Amen. comments about Vince being here to help me. Until love you guys. Bless next you. week, I just appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Vince. Thank you for helping me. And we will see you next week. And then tomorrow, I'll be doing Gideon's at 10 o'clock. And then Thursday at 10 o'clock on live Facebook, I'll be doing How to Pray for Prophets. And I still haven't got that book finished, so I need you guys to help me with that. Until then, God bless. I'll see you later.